So Game of Thrones has come to an end. After eight seasons, an era is over. It's been a long and arduous journey to get here. I've been a fan of A Song of Ice and Fire for years, and though I've criticized pretty much every season of this show since season five, I still have them all on Blu-ray, and I watch them all the way through yearly. Yes, there is a lot about the writing of the last season that I thought was wrong, and even borderline disrespectful to the audience and the source material. There still has never been a show attempting to portray the scope and scale of what Game of Thrones does, and for that, at least, this show deserves respect. And so do the countless talented people involved with this show throughout the years. That being said, I will criticize this episode, so if you're not interested in hearing critiques, this probably isn't the video for you. I will split this review into three sections, pros, cons, and final musings and rating. We'll start with the pros. As always, visual effects, stunning. I really liked the way it looked when Drogon was behind Daenerys and his wings are out. It was a really cool shot. The Iron Throne being melted, really, really cool shot. I've always wanted to see the Iron Throne being destroyed. I've always thought it would be. I'm pretty sure this is a George R. R. Martin idea. It represents the beginning of a new era. A transition into a more democratic system, which is where I always thought the series was heading, even in the books. Also, I think Peter Dinklage gave a great performance this episode. He pretty much stole the show for me. His reaction to the death of Jamie and Cersei was very powerful. It was one of the highlights, if not the highlight, of the episode. It was an emotional and powerful moment. Peter Dinklage nailed it yet again. All right, it's already time to move to the next section of this review, which is the cons. Uh, could you give us your, uh, into the camera, your facial expressions, what it was like reading the, the last episode for the first time? What it was like reading the last episode for the first yeah. time Like is the just... different stages you went through. I mean, it's pretty much one stage. Okay. Of just... Who? <gasps> Now, I just want to say this episode was pretty lackluster. I try to be objective most of the time, and sometimes I fail. But if I'm being honest with myself right now, after seven seasons, this episode just fizzled out, and this ending was not very satisfying. It wasn't bittersweet. It just kind of feels rushed. And I just really can't buy this new characterization of Daenerys as this hyper-delusional, tyrannical person who doesn't see why it's wrong to murder innocent women and children in the street with a dragon. Her answer to Jon Snow didn't even make sense. I don't even understand her internal reasoning, and that's what really bothers me about it. If Cersei is using the people as a weapon against you, go to the Red Keep. And, and burn it down to the ground with Cersei in it. And the people inside of the Red Keep. Well, I don't understand why the people on the, on the street are a threat to you. The people on the street are not a weapon. They're not a threat. The people in the castle, that okay, that's Cer Cersei's shield. That is Cersei's weapon. Take out that. So I'm, I'm struggling to understand Daenerys' internal reasoning. It just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, this whole concept of madness that everyone keeps spitting out around the internet is, is so tremendously vague, and it is not sufficient. It is not sufficient. Enough of an explanation here. For this to have had been impactful, we would have had to sympathize with Daenerys, and we would have had to see and recognize the tragedy of her character, and we would have had to understand how she had gotten to this place but i just felt like it all just came across so poorly and it was just like she comes out and she's just like now that i've taken westeros i want to take over the entire world and burn who knows how many people daenerys has always been so self-analytical she has always been the one to look back and be like Am I becoming like my father? Am I going mad? And I just think it's so strange here that she has zero self-awareness. It's like they took all of her self-awareness away. What happened in this episode was very predictable. Um, it was 
obvious pretty much from the beginning that Jon Snow was going to kill Daenerys. And the moment he got closer, I'm, I'm sure we all knew what was going to happen. But then what I don't understand about this is why Drogon spared Jon Snow and then turned around and set the Iron Throne on fire and just melted it to pieces. I know that Jon Snow is a Targaryen, but that doesn't mean that Drogon wouldn't be furious that he killed his mother. I mean, why would he destroy the Iron Throne? I feel like it would have made more sense for Daenerys to destroy the Iron Throne and say, I'll build my, I'll build a new throne to go along with the new world that I'm planning. In fact, that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought, okay, she'll, she'll destroy the Iron Throne to go along with the new world that she's building. But then how does it make sense for her to die and then Drogon for no reason to destroy the Iron Throne? He's a dragon, why does he even care? Pretty much the entire episode after Jon Snow killed Daenerys was extremely boring. It was almost a perfect ending. The only person here that didn't get a happy ending was Daenerys. Jon Snow is reunited with Ghost and he goes back up north where he already was for most of the show anyway. Sansa becomes queen of the north. Arya is sailing across the Sunset Sea. Tyrion is the hand of the king again, and, and Sam's on the small council with Bronn and Brienne and Davos. This was the closest thing to a fairy tale ending that we could have gotten. You know, I was half expecting Drogon to fly Daenerys to the Mountains of the Morn over in a shy by the shadow and drop her into the volcano, and then it cuts to her face, and then her eyes open, and it's like fiery red, and it's like dun dun dun, set up for the spin off Mad Queen Returns. Or something, I don't know. You know, funny enough, I don't have any specific cons for this episode. It was, like I said, pretty boring, pretty deflating, and it just left me with a feeling of emptiness as I watched it. When Bran said that he would find Drogon, that he would see if he could find Drogon, I got a glimmer of hope maybe we get a final scene with Bran. There's a twist in him doing something nefarious, but nope, it's just left kind of ambiguous. And with that being said, we can lean into my final musings. Now, I want to say that I might be giving the showrunners too much credit here. But I still think Bran is up to something. I don't trust him at all. You mean to tell me that the Three-Eyed Raven allowed all of this to happen so that he could be king? Is that not just a little bit suspicious? I feel like if this is a George R. R. Martin idea and Bran actually ends up on the throne as king of whatever is left of Westeros at the end, then that has tremendous implications because this isn't Bran, this is the Three-Eyed Raven slash Three-Eyed Crow if you're going by the books. So the way it's been explained, this is a consciousness that's been passed down from the children of the forest for who knows how long. So Bran's mind is full of like these ancient, long dead children of the forest green seer spirits. Thousands of years ago, the children of the forest lost Westeros to mankind, and now they've taken it back. Who would have thought? But I digress. This obviously isn't something they're really focusing on in this episode or in this show. They don't really care about the children of the forest. I'm honestly trying to figure out why Sam's book is even called A Song of Ice and Fire. Like, why did you call it that? I need an explanation. Because I know why George R.R. Martin's book series is called A Song of Ice and Fire, and I've talked about that endlessly on this channel through, like, hours and hours of content on the books. But I see no Song of Ice and Fire here. I see a Game of Thrones that's been played and won by Bran, but I see no Song of Ice and Fire. I honestly think these last several seasons, season six on, have had a lot of George R.R. Martin ideas in them but they're very shallow very surface level it doesn't have the depth that we know george r. r martin would deliver in a novel so it, a lot of it just falls flat and this episode is one of the flattest i've never felt so hollow after an episode of game of thrones and it's not just because it's ending it's because of how it's ending it's bitter it isn't bittersweet you know what, I take that back. It's not bitter. A better word is bland. There is not a lot of writing that went into this episode. A lot of this episode is just actors staring. 
and not saying anything. So to wrap it up, this episode had a lot of Martin ideas. I've always said that the books were probably going to end with a shifting in kind of the political structure of Westeros. But yeah, most of these ideas have been executed rather poorly. I wish I had more interesting things to say about this episode, but if I'm being honest, it wasn't a very interesting episode. It was a very predictable episode. A lot of my problems with this episode are born out of older problems in this season and in the show itself. So I don't know what I can attribute to this episode and what I can't. If I'm going with my gut feeling how I felt after I finished the episode, I have to give it a 4. It just wasn't satisfying in the least. So Game of Thrones, it's been one hell of a journey. I'm going to go back to covering books now. I might do a Q&A live stream at some point in the next week and a half on Game of Thrones. But if you haven't checked out my A Song of Ice and Fire videos on this channel, I would recommend them. And I have a new podcast, Obsidian Knights, a visual podcast with Gray Area, where we're going to go through every chapter in A Song of Ice and Fire. So tune in for that. The playlist is on my channel. If you want to get into the next big thing, check out the Dune playlist on my channel. I have a seven-part series called Ultimate Guide to Dune, which is a cinematic video series on the Dune books. And they're very good if I do say so myself. You can sit back and watch them and get the whole entire story. And it's an epic story. And there's even some Game of Thrones influence in Dune. Like George R. R. Martin definitely read Dune. And there were some elements that were taken over. So you can check those out. Peace out, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe for more ideas of Ice and Fire. All right, bonus for people that stayed after the credits. You know what? I can't be mad. I can't be mad at, at this episode. I mean, the last episode, the last several episodes broke me. And you guys saw my emotions throughout all of my reviews. I started off like I'm going to give this a chance. The first two reviews, I'm giving it a chance. And then episode three hit. That broke my soul. And then episode four was just like meh. And then episode five just ripped out the rest of my heart. And so now I'm just left, whatever it is, what it is. They can't change it. No one's going to change it. There's no use in signing a fucking stupid petition. It's not going to do anything. Get the fuck over it. Everybody just get over it. It's done. I'm going to get over it. I'm going to go back to my normal stuff. You can join me there or you can just hit the unsubscribe button if you if you want more rants. Because I, I might do one or two maybe. I'm not saying it's out of the realm of possibility. But for right now, I'm not planning on it. And it's going to be exclusively book content if I can help it. Unless something pulls me back in. But we will see. Peace out, guys.